Welcome to Call Us Mommy Podcast, where we get real about mom life, relationships, and careers. I'm Tiana, a single mom of three. And I'm Marielle, a married mom of four. We're both on a mission to empower you not to settle in any area of life. Let's go, girls. We are <laughs> taking you to Nashville with us. We're currently on the road driving through Kentucky. Yeah, we got up the interstate a little bit. It looks like we're taking some country roads there. Yeah not following our GPS very well, but we thought we would update you on our lives right now. Our living situation. (laughs) If you're following us, you know that we are currently living together. Well, I'm currently living with them, so we are a party of nine. The real question is, how is it going for you? Because everyone, when I do an Ask Me Anything, everyone wants to know what you and your husband think about it, how you guys could allow a friend and her kids to stay with you as an adult so yeah that's the question everyone seems to be very concerned with our well-being even if we did not like know them at all before this situation (laughs) and also like flabbergasted at the idea of like two families living together so we're fine I mean I love it it's been obviously like it's like having a sleepover with your best friend I mean we don't sleep in the same room but (laughs) You know, we hang out throughout the evening and then wake up. Like, I know I'm going to see you around. It's awesome. And yeah. we do things together. Like, never in my mind did I think it would be stressful because our kids are always hanging out together anyway. Yeah. So, I have never been able to, like, live with anyone. And I was a little bit stressed. Not about them, but, like, I am a person I have to have a lot of space and time sometimes to myself. And I... Not that it was, like, living with her, but, like, also, like, basically sharing a room with my kids right now. I was like, okay, I'm never going to have, like, me time. But it's been great. Like, I'm honestly getting really nervous. It's getting closer to, like, my house being done and me moving into it. And I'm like, I actually want to stay here. Yeah, I'm sad, too. I I got really sad yesterday whenever you went and looked at your house. Yeah, it's coming along. I will say, like, it's been so nice, especially, like, I'm a single mom. So if you're new and you're listening, uh, it's just me and this one-man band. And now that I've had Ariel's, it's been so great because we alternate, like, well, on Sunday we come up with, like, our meals for the week. And then we alternate who's going to cook them. So it's, like, it's so nice sharing those roles. And the other day my clothes were in the dryer and the washer and I came back. She moved them, (laughs) folded them. I was like, hell yes. I can get used to this. So it's been really nice to just, like, have someone else there that, like, it's basically on the same level as you as, like, you know, cooking and cleaning and, yeah. like, helping. It's That's been amazing. Like, you're playing on the same team. Yes. Like you're alone. Like, as a single mom, you are the only one leading the team. Yeah, it's just you. You and yeah. your team. Like, coach has to show up all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and for everyone who's, like, always asking my husband, um, he's, you know, not really home, like, most of the time. Like, just like most men. They yeah, work a lot. Yeah, he comes home around 6. Yeah. And, you know, we've usually already had the kids eating dinner just because it's easier. There's stuff that goes on in the evenings or homework and stuff, so we just, like, knock dinner out. He gets the dishes sometimes. He usually, yeah. He usually gets the dishes and then helps, like, get the kids to bed and then, like, Tiana's Her kids. Usually, her kids. Yeah. Her kids to bed. <laughs> he does do the dishes for yeah. all of us, right. but he gets their kids to bed. And then Tiana's, like, getting her kids to bed, so then she usually, like, does her own thing. And, like, my husband and I still do our own thing, so it's not like we're... You know, like, I don't think we've really sat and watched a show together once. We did weekends. Shania Twain, yes. Yes. Uh, but it was a weekend, so it, that yeah. would have been, like, a normal that's Saturday. that's what we yeah. do anyway. Zero will go get us Jiffy Tree. He'll sit in line for ice cream for us for, like, an hour, and we'll stay home. And yeah, he does. Day. And that's, like, I think, too, is why it's made it so easy is because we're not, like, two families that have had these, like, whole different lives going on. Right. We already were spending, like, sometimes we did eat dinner together a lot of the times, yeah. especially in the summer. And on the weekends, especially Saturdays, we spend a lot of time together. Yeah. And then Sunday, we go to, we always go to church together. Then we go to lunch a lot of the time. Yeah. So I think that's why it's been so surprising to me that people have been, like, oh my gosh, like, how's that going to be? Like, are you nervous about it? Like, is that going to be awful? Like, they, like the comments that people have made about it, I'm like, first yeah. of all, do you not I didn't like, know I was like, such a burden. Like your best friend? Like, if your best friend was like, I need somewhere to live for a couple months while I'm, you know, waiting for my house to be done, you would you not jump at the opportunity to be like, let's have a two-month sleepover. That sounds awesome. Yeah. 
And if not, like maybe you should be with your friends. But also we've had people live with us before that needed like an in-between. I offer it to people all the time. I mean, not like randos, but it's not something that I am scared of doing. One, we have a house that like is very large. So it's very separate from like the main living area. Yeah. Like I technically have my own entrance, like entrance. Yes. My own basically living room slash playroom, bedroom. And then bathroom. So yeah. we have access to, like, have our own space. And something about me is, like, I'm really big on, like, boundaries. Like, last night they even were like, you can stay in here. And I was like, no, like, I'm just coming here, you know, grabbing something. So I know, like, okay, like, I'm not going to stay, like, following them around. They need their own space when their kids are in bed. Get in bed with us and then they'll yeah. die. <laughs> just, yeah, no, last night I walked in, I knew I, like a couple <laughs> times in the kitchen and I was like she I know I walked in like she was one of the kids like not wanting to be seen <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like I understand like how like I want to give them their space too so like majority of the day I leave actually because we both work from home and so she's like working you know in her office area and I leave and I'll go to Starbucks and then get my kids and we'll come home and do dinner together and then basically I shower and then I go back to my like my little area mm-hmm. so honestly the, the biggest thing that I I've, I've taken from um, not this experience necessarily because I don't think I need to learn anything from it, but just like going through this and having a lot of commentary on our decision, <laughs> especially because we've done it before and like the comments that we've gotten is just how unwilling a lot of people are to live in actual community. Mm-hmm. Because if people lived in actual community already, this would not be a crazy idea to share housing with them. I mean, obviously it'd be different if you live in like a thousand square foot house. And yes. You're, you yeah. know, piling nine people in there. But so we are very privileged in that way to like offer that space. Still, we're doing life together already. Mm-hmm. So it just made sense. It, it wasn't like a burden. It just made it literally made more sense than, you know, her going somewhere else. Yeah. Because community is not just like getting around and talking about other people with people. And it's also not like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. And right. then you actually you ne- never do anything. Yeah, you never do anything. Yeah. It's doing something instead of saying like, hey, do you mm-hmm. need anything? It's just doing something. Yes, absolutely. I know. And it's been like really great because it's created some good habits for me because I didn't cook dinner every single night because I was constantly making excuses and just burnt out and overwhelmed. And I couldn't think of like meal ideas and it's like made it fun. So what we're going to do is like, okay, like this next two months and we put them on our like Google calendar. Yeah. So then we're like, okay, after two months, like we can go back and we can like, you know, just like keep doing this weekly or like, yeah, pull for things and like have ideas when we feel like our minds are just like fried and we can't think of anything else. So like, I'm like, it does help a lot to have them on. Like if you use an actual calendar or a Google calendar, whatever, like that's what I use to look at it because even throughout the week, like I'll make a meal plan. If I don't put it on a calendar Mm -hmm. or write it down or something, I'll forget what the meal plan is. I'll forget what my menu is. I bought all this stuff, but I'll forget like I'm supposed to make whatever and that stuff will just go bad. So having it somewhere helps a lot. Yeah. So I'm like super excited about that. Like when I leave and like, and to be excited about it because it's like now I've already created that habit. And especially like after two months of living here, creating that habit for two months of like cooking and like having fun cooking. Cause like I get excited when it's my night and I'm like, Oh, I get to cook. And like, we're cooking for a big family. Yeah. So double what I'm usually cooking. Right. So it'll probably feel like a lot easier mm-hmm. and you know, less, less people to please, less people to make food for yeah but it's been really nice so like there's some definitely lots of good things I can take away from like actually living with another family yeah and I left my house like when I was 17 years old so I mean then I was married but like to actually I never went through like where I lived with like roommates and like best friends and a college dorm or anything like that I went from literally living with my family my mom to living with a husband to living by myself so I didn't really know what to expect like actually moving in just because I do, like, so much space, but I've, like, loved it. Yeah. And when you lived with us the first time, like, when you left, it really wasn't – it was, like, you really just, like, stayed the night a few nights. You didn't actually – Yeah. I mean, your stuff lived there more than you did. Yes. Because you were, like, pretty on it with getting all that in in place. Yeah. What is – I think it was, like, five or six days. It was less than a week. And I remember thinking, Tana, you're going to be here at least a couple weeks. And you were, like – No. But I was so determined because I didn't know what, like, what it could look like and how that would feel. And I love that I did that because it forced me to, like, basically go be a big girl and, like, start making these things. And I think I needed to do it for my kids, too, to show them, like, look, we're going to be okay. Like, we can live by ourselves. And I didn't sleep for three months, you know, but 
It's okay. <laughs> we made but it I through think it. That too, like, I mean, I can't speak to that position specifically, but just like becoming independent, it's like to actually become independent and feel those things and push yourself to do them. It's like you have to do it before you're ready mm -hmm. to actually like be at peace with those things. Because if you would have stayed, you might have stayed three months, which would have been fine, mm -hmm. but because you like felt like comfortable in that, yeah, and you might have needed to be uncomfortable in those moments, you know. Absolutely, I think anything that involves growing and growth, you're right. going to be uncomfortable, and that was just a part of my journey that I had to get uncomfortable. And, like, even with this, like, this was my mindset is, like, okay, like, we may be uncomfortable for a little bit, you know, all being in a bedroom. Now I'm here and I'm, like, it's not uncomfortable at all. Like, I love this. I want to stay. It's also a huge bedroom, guys. So, please don't be thinking yeah. about just in a closet. It's where we lived whenever we were renovating the house. So. No, it's bigger than the, the family room. Actually, it's probably double the family room of my old house that oh, I sold. Yeah. And so, it, it is definitely big. Like, we have, it like. It used to be a garage. <laughs> yes, yes. We have all of our beds in there, like, and we're all comfortable and have space. I mean, still plenty of room, but it's just like, you know, your kids get on your yeah. nerves and then you're going to be in a bedroom with them. Right. Like, I'm like, I'm never going to get away from that. Like, sometimes your only break from your kids is nighttime. Is nighttime. Yeah. But it's actually not been bad at all because I put my kids to bed and then by the time I get go back in there to actually go to bed myself, they're already yeah. asleep. So it is basically like just going back to my room. Yes. But... Yeah, no, and that was my mindset through too. Though, is like selling. I was like, okay, we may have to be uncomfortable for a little bit, and then you know we'll be like have our house again. But I don't know. I think life is just a journey of getting uncomfortable. Yeah, and and experiencing those things. Like you know, you'll I'll, we'll never get this opportunity to have like these couple of months together again. I mean, even if like let's say in two years something happened where one of us had to live together again, it'll still be just like a completely different season, a different mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So I think one thing, just like when your routine is questioned or you know you change, mm -hmm. just embrace it if you know that there's going to be an end in sight. Because why not? Like let's say it is awful and we like hated every minute <laughs> of it. We know it's going to end, so it's not like you are stuck with it for Forever. the rest of your life, and you can take something out of it. And so I think that just anytime you're presented with an opportunity like that to, I don't know, just change up your routine. Yeah, and have how, fun with it. Like that's how, how you, yeah. The house is so big. She'll literally text me like the other day. She was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, and like too, like again, like I'm really big on boundaries. I teach my kids boundaries. Like I even told them like, okay, let's not like go into their rooms, you know, unless it's like a Saturday, like we would any other day, just, mm -hmm. just to give space. Yeah. And, uh, and we also have like a code. I haven't had to use it. But I told my kids, okay, if I say red, that means immediately go back to our room and you're in trouble or we need to take a break from... Like a family. Yeah, time. like a family yeah. basically regroup. And so I haven't had to use it, though. Like yeah. the other day, somebody was like, you haven't said red. And I was like... She's probably been like dreading <laughs> it, like you saying it. So that's funny because I didn't say anything like that to my kids. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, it's really like ongoing. I've always kind of had these conversations with at least my two oldest. My younger ones don't really understand. But Baden especially and Lorelai, they, like, sometimes will just, like, want alone time, like any, you know, anybody does. And so I'll always just say, like, you know, if everyone's in the house, like, and you can't get that alone time, like, if everyone's in your room or whatever, just tell me and I will make sure it happens. You don't have to be the bad guy, like, and say, everybody get out of my room because they don't really know how to communicate that sometimes. Like, I'll be the bad guy that's like, okay, everybody has to get out of Baden's room or whatever. He has to do X, Y, and Z. But I like the idea of a code. Yeah. Word because like they're already prepped for it and when they hear it it's almost kind of like fun yeah it is that's why I, I i just needed to make sure that they understood because like kids yeah. are kids and like when they're playing together just like siblings you know they start like right. fighting and stuff and i'm just and like our kids do i mean they they, they act more <laughs> they like do. siblings than they do friends for sure they do and they have way before even like us moving in right. together is because we have we have really did life together for the past three years yeah Pretty, pretty regularly. Like, yeah. it's like that has been our life. And so... Like, if we go a couple days without physically seeing each other, we've never gone, I don't think, a day without no. talking. But if we go... If but we do days, that, then she knows I'm doing something bad. Yeah, and I check up on her. <laughs> but if we go a couple days without seeing each other, our kids are like, my, my kids will be like, can, you know, Tiana and her kids come over? Like, they're just like, why haven't we seen our family? Like, we're just questioning yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been really good, and I think it's a good experience for our kids, and it makes it fun. Mm -hmm. I remember my mom, like, like she had friends, and they lived together, yeah. like, and there was 
nine of us actually. Yeah, there were nine of us and we just had so much fun. Yeah. Like it's some of my best childhood yeah. memories. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Call Us Mommy podcast. If you want to spend more time with us, make sure to hit follow. And if you like the episode, share with a friend and leave a review. 